Hello Year 9, welcome back to your next Living Room Lessons and the last Living Room Lessons in our leisure topic. So what you're going to need for today's lesson is your exercise book, pen and a ruler, your phone, and then there are three sheets that will really help. So Impact of the Rugby World Cup sheet, the Amex map sheet, and then the sheet you had last lesson. I want you to come back to that, the little one with the map of all of the different stadiums. So if you make sure you've got those printed if possible, if not, you might have to copy them out, which will be quite complicated with the Amex map. So good luck with that one. Um, before we get started on today's lesson, um, jog your memory as per usual. So three questions, scan the QR code, have a go, fill in your name, let us know who you are uh, and good luck. Okay, so what we're going to be thinking about today is we're continuing to look at the Rugby World Cup, but we're now going to be having a look at the more more of the impacts of it. So the local and the national impacts of the Rugby World Cup. That is your title for today. Local and national impacts of the Rugby World Cup. Please make sure you write that in, underline it with a ruler. Uh, we will get started by having a look at two key terms or two words that I actually mentioned last lesson. I said we'll come back to them this lesson and here we are. So when we think about jobs, there are loads of different ways we can categorise different people's jobs. But one way we can categorise them is through calling it either a direct employment or an indirect employment. So direct employment are jobs that are created within a business. So the Rugby World Cup created direct employment for the referees and the linesmen and the people who actually work in the stadiums, so the cleaners who work in the stadiums, the newsreaders. Those were all jobs that were directly created because of the Rugby World Cup. But we also have what we know as indirect employment. And these are jobs that come as a result of a business setting up nearby. So because of the Rugby World Cup, pubs near the stadium would have in, uh, witnessed an increase in customers. Maybe they took on an extra barman. And that is what we call indirect employment. Buses would have been considerably busier as people were trying to get around the cities. Bus drivers is an example of indirect employment. So what I would like you to do, first of all, is pause videos and copy down these two key terms, give them a little highlight for me. And then I want you to create two spider diagrams to show different examples of jobs that were created through direct employment and indirect employment. I've already given you quite a few examples, actually. I've basically given you all the answers, but I want you to try and come up with at least three of your own. So three of your own for each of them. Plus you can write down the ones I've got. So make sure you've got five or six on your mind maps at the end. And I will talk through a few in a minute. Okay, so we could start off, as I say, indirect employment. You could have referees, you could have linesmen, cleaners, uh, newsreaders, um, people who work in the stadium in like this food vendors, food ven vendors, food vendors. In terms of indirect employment, we've also got, as I said, barmen and bus drivers, but we've also got people who have their own businesses like cafe workers, um, hotel staff. Um, restaurant staff, all of these kind of industries would have benefited hugely because of the Rugby World Cup. They would have had more people coming to use their facilities, so they might have taken on extra staff in order to keep these facilities open. So what we're going to do now, now normally I'm sure you can all imagine if we were in school I'd have you all standing up and we'd be playing a good old-fashioned game of higher or lower together but it doesn't really work the same when it's just me in my living room. So uh, I'm just going to talk through these. Um, and what this is, is it shows you all of the different cities that were part of the Rugby World Cup and the estimated amount of money in millions that was bought both directly and indirectly because of the Rugby World Cup. So Manchester, 45 million. Oh, Newcastle, do we think higher or lower? Let's see what you're all saying. Nothing. Silence. Good. Uh, Newcastle was a lot higher, 93 million pounds. Leeds, higher or lower? 53, so a bit lower, 53 million pounds. London, what do we reckon? Oh, I think that might be lower. I doubt there was much going on in London. Oh, that's such a big number, I don't even know. 1.2 billion, is that? Yeah, generated because of the Rugby World Cup. Leicester, do we think Leicester got more or less than London? Definitely less, 59 million. Um, Birmingham, 56 million. Exeter, 39 million. Cardiff, 316 million, so a lot in Cardiff. Milton Keynes, 56 million. Gloucester, 48. And Brighton, 
46. So 46 million pounds alone was brought in to Brighton. So what I want you to do now, first of all, is I want you to go back to your maps from last lesson where you had the map of the stadiums. And I want you just to add these numbers on. So how many pounds, millions of pounds, each of these different cities um, generated through direct and indirect employment. Maybe just add a little key. So maybe write all of your numbers in a different colour and then uh, do your key. Um, and then I want you to answer these two questions. How would the local economy of Brighton have benefited from this money? So how might the local economy have benefited? And why did London benefit the most? Why do you think London had considerably more money than the rest? So answer these two questions in full sentences and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so first of all, ways the Brighton economy might have benefited. So it might have meant that pubs and cafes had increased footfall, which meant there were more people in the shops, they earned more money, they would have been paying more taxes, that would have then gone back to the local council. The local council could then invest that into things like homeless protection, or into schools, or into the local healthcare, or into improving roads. So it's this really nice cycle of how when people spend money in shops, that goes back to the local people. And in terms of why London benefited the most, that's obviously because London is such a massively important global city. It's got a huge amount of airports around it, so people would have flown directly into London. London also has this kind of international image of the red phone boxes and the Queen and black, ca black cabs, which meant that obviously people would be fascinated and want to stay in London. There's a huge amount of tourist attractions there. So that's why London would have benefited the most. But we're going to have a look at a few smaller places before we come on to Brighton. So we've got two different links here. One is an article from one of the councillors in Exeter, which is one of the smaller cities that was used. Exeter, for those of you who don't know, is down in Devon, lovely little city. I nearly ended up living there and you guys might never have had me. Um, but yeah, so here is an extract from the councillor of Exeter who says, Involvement with the Rugby World Cup certainly provided the city with a once in a lifetime opportunity to raise its profile nationally and internationally. Very important for attracting visitors and investment. As well as enjoying the games, it has resulted in encouraging many people to take on a more active and healthy lifestyle and directly helped young people into training and work. Also, many more are now playing rugby and two new ladies rugby teams have been formed. So that's what's happened in Exeter. And then I want you to go and watch this video here, which is about what happened in Gloucester, which is one of the other really small cities where it took place, and find out how it had a positive impact in Gloucester. What I would like you to do once you've watched the video, and I've obviously read through this, but you might want to read through it again, is I just want you to very briefly summarise how these two places benefited. So Exeter benefited because, and then Gloucester benefited because, all right? So two very quick, simple state statements on that. I'm not going to go through the answers because it's really obvious for you, all right? So one of the main ways that these cities would have benefited is through an improvement in something called infrastructure. Now, infrastructure is probably one of the most key, key terms within geography. It's one that we talk about a lot. I've probably already mentioned it before, and you've high, kind of had an idea what it is, but I'm going to tell you explicitly now what I mean by infrastructure. So infrastructure is the basic structures and services needed by society, such as water supply, sewage systems, roads, railways, etc. So when a place gets more uh, money generated into its economy, it then leads to improvements in infrastructure, which inevitably then helps a place develop. It makes people want to live there. It means more people move there, more houses are built. It makes a place more vibrant, more um, solid, all right? So please write down this title of infrastructure, um, and not, sorry, not title, this key term, infrastructure, uh, and the definition, this, as I say, is a really, really key one. And then I want you to have a think, how could the infrastructure of an area be improved by a major sporting event? And there's a picture there to get you thinking about it, all right? Okay, so one of the obvious ways, and this actually happened up at the Amex, is due to um, improvements in infrastructure, um, they might start to improve rail links. So increasing the amount of trains, making stations longer, making trains more frequent. So in, because of the major sporting events, these cities will have seen that they had a lot more people coming through their train stations. Uh, and obviously they would have had to improve the infrastructure to support this. So what I want you to have a think about next, and this is a sheet that you've got, um, is a range of different impacts of the Rugby World Cup and what scale they are. So what I would like you to do is on this sheet, I want you to go through each of these impacts and first of all decide whether it's a positive or a negative impact. So is it good or bad? 
And then I want you to decide, is it an impact on the local area? Is it an impact on a national scale? Or is it an international impact? Is it gonna impact multiple countries? Um, so get this sheet out, if not, please copy this up. It's not gonna be too much copying. Um, and decide whether it's positive or negative. So put a P or an N or write positive, negative, and then put a tick in just one, whether it's local, national, or international. Actually, not just one, you might find it fits into multiple. Okay, moving on. So, what I want you to have a go at now is have a think about uh, a bit of an exam question. So this question is, explain why the government are keen to host international events such as these, so such as the Rugby World Cup. Um, and this links in very nicely to a key term we learned, learned a few lessons ago, and that is the positive multiplier effect. So remember, the positive multiplier effect is where one thing has a positive knock-on impact on things in the surrounding area. So we looked at it in terms of the new campsite opens in the South Downs, um, the New Forest, all the local camp shops and pubs and cafes and supermarkets are going to benefit because of the positive multiplier effect. Because people are staying at the campsite, they're going to use the other local services. So for a four mark explain question, you're going to make two points and you're going to explain them once. So it needs some kind of elaboration. It needs some kind of this means that or this results in or this leads to. OK, so two simple points. Why would the government want to host international events and a quick why on it? So very quickly, I'm going to show you the mark scheme for this. So you can have a look at your answer, maybe give yourself a mark, but don't give yourself four out of four straight away, Friday. Um, so what we've got, so a point could be more tourists visit the UK. This then means they spend more money in the hotels and restaurants. So it's a point and it's explained. Could say jobs are created in service industries or the events are broadcast globally, creating a positive brand for the UK. There are obviously lots of other things you could have put there. These are not a definitive list. There's loads of different benefits you could have put. But give yourself a mark for two points and then being explained. So the last kind of key term we're coming on to is having a look at what is known as a legacy. So this is almost having a look after the event has happened. So after a major event like the Rugby World Cup has happened, there will be a legacy left behind. So that legacy is what we would call a long lasting impact that will benefit people for years to come. So for example, when they improved infrastructure, um, when they made the station longer at the uh, Farmer station, that's obviously continued to benefit people in the local area. So that is the legacy of the Rugby World Cup. So what I want you to do is copy out this key term and I want you to watch this video. Now this video um, shows you about the Brighton Beach um, fan zone which we now know as the Lunar Cinema, but the Lunar Cinema wasn't ever in Brighton before the Rugby World Cup. The first year they had it was the year of the Rugby World Cup to broadcast the games. Now it became such a popular thing that it's now been back every summer since, which again is an example of the legacy of the Rugby World Cup. So watch this video, copy the key term down, and I want you just to have a go at answering this question briefly, just a quick sentence. How has the Rugby World Cup left a positive legacy? Okay, so I already mentioned what one of the positive impacts of the legacy might be. So things like um, improvements to Farmer Station, things like uh, the Beach Cinema, they are legacies in Brighton because of the Rugby World Cup. Now we're going to focus for the last bit of the lesson on Brighton and the impact it had on Brighton. So as I mentioned, two of the games were held at the Amex Stadium. I'm sure some of you were even lucky enough to get to go to them. So the Amex Stadium is up here on the outskirts of Brighton. I'm sure you all know it's up in a place called Falmer, right by the University of Sussex and the University of Brighton. So it's not in the town centre, but it's really easily accessible because you can get trains up there or you can get on by car or bus on the Lewis Road. And in terms of where Brighton is, um, Brighton's not too far from London. It's between Gatwick. Uh, it's Gatwick is between London and Brighton, so Brighton played quite a key role during the Rugby World Cup because it is very accessible of London. A lot of people would have stayed in London and come down to Brighton for the day to watch a match, which would have been you know, really easy for a lot of international tourists. So what I want you to do, nearly finished for today, is you should all have this map which shows the Amex Stadium. Um, what I want you to do is, using this map, I want you to annotate around it 
what some of the impacts of the Rugby World Cup would have been. Now, I have given you some here already, so litter, traffic congestion, overcrowding, noise pollution, air pollution, more trade, more jobs, money for car parking. But what I want you to do, obviously you're all gonna just copy those down and probably ignore this, but I want you to have a think. What extra things can you see on this map that might have benefited um, or been a negative impact because of where the Amex is. So obviously we've got this road. So when you're writing out these ideas, you can add a bit more context to it. So traffic congestion on the A27. So you're using map evidence, which is something you have to do a lot of in geography. Often they'll give you a map and they'll ask you to use map evidence. And if you just said traffic congestion, you wouldn't get the mark. But if you said traffic congestion on the A27, that would be where you get your extra marks. So on your map, maybe stick it in the middle of a page and around it, I want you to annotate map evidence of what impacts could have been from the Rugby World Cup. And I want you to then sort them into whether they are positive or negative. And then if you're really wanting to push yourself, you could sort them into social, economic and environmental. There are also two kind of stretch questions here, which I'm sure some of you will love to have a look at. Um, so yeah, pause your video. This is what you can spend the bulk of your lesson on today. Take a good 10 minutes on this to make sure you're adding lots of detailed notes about how the Amex and the surrounding area was impacted. Okay, last thing you're going to do today, I seem to be sat down still, I'm tired. And um, last thing you're going to do today is have a think about this eight mark question. So this eight mark question is international sporting events are a positive thing. Evaluate this opinion. So what I want you to have a think about. So when we do an eight mark question, we have to give two different points of view, which is why I've got two big hands on the board, because this is a good way to think about planning your answer to give one point of view and then say, however, on the other hand, and there's your second point of view. See what I did there? Um, so what I would like to do, I just want you to have a plan of this answer, although if you want to write it and send it to your teachers, I'm sure we would all love to read them, is I want you to have a go at planning this question. So what I would do is draw out two hands, nice and creative, and I want you to make some points on your fingers. So how would you say that it has a positive impact on one hand? How would you say it has a negative, not very big impact on the other hand? So maybe on the fingers, you can write some different points that you might use. And then as I say, if you want to have a go at writing it, please do, but it's completely up to you. So I will put this up on the board now, and then I'll be back to finish off the lesson in a moment. Okay, so we've done loads today, well done. So you should have direct and indirect employment definitions and examples, how the economy of Brighton and London benefited, the positive impacts for Exeter and Gloucester, the infrastructure key term, the range of scales sheet, the positive multiplier question, the legacy key term, an annotated map of the Amex, and an eight mark question plan. So well done year nine. We've got through another whole topic. Um, I'm sure your teacher's gonna be giving you a revision pack soon. Look forward to that. And I will see you all very, very soon.